what happened in 1971. Interesting war of too much politics, thoughts. Might be a good episode. I have my suspicions about what happened just by that date and the charts. But I'll dive into this and find out what else was going on in 1971, if anything of substance. My interest is piqued. We got off the gold standard. That's the big one. Lesser known or perhaps credited Gimme Hoffa stepped down from running a union. Or to put it another way, 1971 marks the beginning of the decline in influence of the labor movement. Bingo, that was my first thought. Where central banking really hit the nose button. Like Paul Walker on cocaine. It's pretty obvious who's to blame. It's not what backs the money, it's who controls and manipulates its price or quantity. The majority of gold today is owned by big institutions. The reason bankers loved gold was because it was easy to monopolize and manipulate. They didn't like silver because it was more plentiful. Back then money was created through a pen and paper as an accounting entry. Today it's created out of a digital keystroke. The digital age was definitely a blessing because we can put an end to this government or central bank fiduciary partnership scan through our own money like crypto or blockchain. I've noticed that a lot of old timer investors who used to be skeptics of crypto are now believers. It looks like 2020 definitely exposed a lot. It has been a process. It didn't just all happen at once, in 1913 the Fed was created. But they didn't have all of the powers they have today, they were however able to set rates. FDR attacked the gold standard system in the 30s too. Made banking with it more burdensome and Dymo basically was the move that made gold not money. Creating less accountability. Then in the 40s they had the Bretton Woods Agreement where a bunch of countries all decided to fix their exchange rates to the USD instead of gold. They all held each other accountable. As you can see the slippery slope is getting steeper and steeper as time goes on, the basically scrapping of that original agreement was in 1971. So, less accountability. Also in 71 Nixon completely severed all of the dollar's direct relationship to gold. They no longer allowed redemption for gold at a fixed value. No accountability. So most credit Nixon with taking us off the gold standard. Credit being a funny word. There was still the final nail in the coffin, though, even though the Fed was already, by this time, acting in a political fashion, probably just some final repeals and legal work in 73. Basically, over the last century, currency has moved from something people could depend on. Something not controlled imperfect people with human motivations, into something that is controlled by people. People called experts, another fake science to hold over the heads of the masses. They have been expanding the balance sheet ever since with a little detour from Paul Volcker during the Carter and Reagan years. It is very tough for them to do things like that. A true capitalist loves a constant when there is an exchange. We treat the dollar as a constant even though it isn't. That is evident with most people preferring to finance big purchases now than ever before. Why? To pay it back with less valuable money. It all comes down to a devaluation and debasement of currency which leads to inflation. Inflation was a well-documented problem in the 70s. I listened to a good podcast on this process from Bob Murphy a few months ago. He is a just little dry, but a brilliant economist and a good teacher. All of this said, I can very easily explain inflation's relationship with the phenomenon in 71 and why 2020 is going to look like round two. I'll take to the show for that. Lol. My sponsor will like it. Rise of the Asian Tiger Economies. Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea, and Hong Kong. America has been buying things it can't afford ever since. The question is, when is it going to stop? Peter Siff has a funny metaphor for this. It goes something like this. 
There are four Asians and an American on a deserted island, one Asian, hunts. Another Asian fishes and gathers. Another Asian cooks. The American draws the pictures of dead American presidents for the Asians who, in exchange for those pictures, let him eat. How long before they get sick of the pictures, they are certainly coming here and buying our hard assets with these soft pictures. So they might already be turning up the heat. Who can blame them? This gets into the fallacy of spending being the fake science driver of the economy versus production and true value creation. Drop a billion dollars on that island. Hell drop a thousand London bars of gold on the beach. Will it drive their economy? No. One of your quotes the bigger the business is, the more you can weather the storm. I believe it will take another 50 years or something so radical to break American economy. Note, I am from India. Ha <laughs> ha. I love the implication that the American government is a business. It has just been legitimized as the power that be by the people who serve it. The American economy is a bubble based on a currency that is a bubble. I believe it is already broken. We have just been patching holes in the sinking ship for 100 years. When will it finally be underwater? Who knows, but the trend is in place. Unfortunately, they currently and will continue to blame capitalism and evil business people for its descent. 1971. A very important year. I was born. Oh, and that gold or fiat thing happened? So just my birthday then. It seems that GDP growth per FK this event has always been pretty consistent. I'm convinced that a lot of economic data is manipulated and skewed to make it look better than it really is. We have had massive inflation in the last 50 years and yet inflation is low. I'm guessing there is more than one way to calculate real versus nominal prices. This is going to be a two-parter. Damn, yes, because at the end of the day, money does not matter. It is about production. And once you compensate decrease of production with the money printer, bad things happen. The US have survived it so far because it prints money. What will happen when there will be too many dollars on the planet? Or what will happen when people will use another currency? No wonder the G7 announced a ruling on crypto. I know we said no politics, but hear me out ironically Chinese democracy is a nightmare for the US. They already do better everything the US is doing, but they don't inspire trust because everyone knows the government is in every Chinese company. This is why nobody happily deals with China. Should China become democratic, they will offer the best the world has to offer, and the West will lose it all. But also, was born, and America hasn't been in the black since. Technology and communications finally allow the entry of Asia into the modern global market. In 1970, General Electric started the trend for modern outsourcing manufacturing, which by default means importing cheap wages. This has now shifted to the service industry. India's global share in IT alone has grown in the last 20 years from 2.5% to 20%. Expect to see Indian service companies opening offices in the US and UK soon, just like Japanese car companies opened manufacturing plants back then. Just like Japan and South Korea are no longer our backroom boys, China and India won't be either for much longer. So, no reason for UK or US companies to pay much. Dan. Gold? Nah. It was Color TV. Or C0 VLD beta version. Also what happened in 71? Nothing. Gold was $40 in 1971. If someone had bought $100,000 worth of it back then, they would have bought 2,500 ounces of gold. 2,500 ounces of gold at today's prices. Can be traded back into dollars for. Dollar four comma six hundred and twenty five comma oh 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 the S and P was at ninety eight. LOL that's so weird. Same hundred grand in the S and P would have been three million seven hundred and forty five thousand dollars today. People say gold only goes up when the dollar goes down. Okay, it did. What is the S and P's excuse then? The answer is it is supple and demand driven, not directly inverse to the dollar. One huge thing you have to be careful about when reading stuff like this is, what do they consider a real wage? 
Last time I checked, the Bureau of Labor Statistics does not include employee benefits in what it considers a wage. So, as health insurance rates have skyrocketed over the years, the portion of money paid by a company for an employee that the BLS considers a wage has decreased. Any time I hear people that study this stuff for a living talk about how wages have stagnated, I know they have an agenda. They know better and they're deliberately messing with the data to make their point. This is not factoring the current paper manipulation in gold to suppress its price. Russia and China own a lot more gold than they declare to have. This thread is reminiscent of the old adage, there's three kinds of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics. Just want to jump in and say Bob Murphy is the man. The PIG to capitalism put so many pieces together for me back in the day and paved the way for reading more serious economics and libertarian works. He also introduced me to whole life of policies, a system that's been working great for me. Haven't checked out the new podcast yet, but I'm excited for it. I've listened to almost every Contra Krugman, every episode Bob did on the Tom Woods show, even some episodes of the Lara Murphy Report. I also love watching Bob debate and lecture. You can probably find a video of Bob explaining exactly what happened in 1971, in thorough technical details. Hopefully, this endorsement catches the eye of anyone here who wants to understand a lot more about economics. Also, the Harry Brown books from the 1970s probably answer this question from a contemporary point of view, for example, You Can Profit from a Monetary Crisis, or whatever that title is. It's also helpful to remember that any economist at the Fed or in some newspaper is very much a there is a reason why economics is a notoriously divided field. Exponential technological advancement. Canada sold all of its gold holdings a few years ago. Something about it being a useless barbaric relic or some such. These are the people we put our trust in. LOL. Government. They know what's best. We got off the gold standard, basically unhinging the US dollar from any meaningful measure of value. Massive inflation has ensued. The rich and poor have been pitted against each other, when it's the government and the central bank who have been creating the problem all along. Just another tool in the toolbox for people who want socialism to come to the freest country of all time. Take this with a grain of salt, but I've heard a lot of Chinese gold is fake. And they have given some of this fake gold to the US and that's how they found out. I wouldn't trust China and Russia to be honest. Also China's Communist Party apparently owes people over 90 billion dollars on the old bonds from the Chinese emperor. And since the nobody in the world trusts China and what they say they're also running out of dollars. Global economic collapse US to China, welcome to the party, pal. They import much more gold than what they export. So there is speculation that the government is owning a lot more than what they declare to have. I'm sure the price of gold and silver is heavily manipulated by institutions and governments. It's just probably done in a hidden and clever way. That's my Tim foil hat gut feeling. Not too long ago J. Morgan was fined for manipulating silver futures. Just like the US dollar right now. Plunge protection team is doing a decent job. LOL has a write-up and interview with the creators of about how it went down. As far as crypto, I hear a lot of bankers talk about how Bitcoin will be made illegal of course, since it poses a serious threat to them. Problem is, that's a very wily cat to put back in the bag. Good luck. It's the same problem the music industry had with Napster and Torrent sites. At some point, we digital citizens broke that old model of music delivery, and we've never looked back. I remember reading a book about how the conquistadors found Mayan cities that were using gold to roof their homes. Apparently, the Mayans thought gold was a shitty metal not useful for much. They were kind of right. Terrible for weapons, can't make cookware with it, too soft. It's a pretty good conductor, but honestly a person could make an argument that gold also only holds value because enough people believe it's worth something. I stumbled across Eric Weinstein on Glenn Beck's podcast and they talked about this to some extent. 
To summarize, institutions are built on the assumption that an economy built on technological innovation is going to keep on growing exponentially. This enables institutions to promise their people that their lives will keep on getting better. As long as economic growth happens, life keeps on getting better indeed. However, comes a time when growth reaches a peak. The pie is no longer growing fast enough to enable everyone to get a bigger slice, and so technically speaking, the next generation becomes poorer as the millennials year. It seems that is what happened in 1971 to 1973 in the US. The economy reached a peak in exponential growth. What unfolded after was some sort of financial dark magic to make everyone believe the economy kept on growing. You can find the vid here first 20 minutes. The rest is my own theory. Unable to grow, the US exported the building of wealth to Asia Nixon visited China in 1972. In the short term, it was better politically. You could manufacture 10 toys in China for the price of one toy in the US, and please 10x more electors at the same time. The people felt they were getting richer and they were, but it was at the cost of the strength of their currency. All of these Asian economies developed thanks to the fact that they were manufacturing the lives of the American people. Comes a time though, when Asian labor costs start catching up. The possibility to manufacture for cheaper no longer exists. The currency loses value because the economy almost entirely outsourced itself, and the people in shock, realize that not only they make less money, but that everything is more expensive. So America is double effed. It is no longer growing and it can no longer outsource the manufacturing of products at lesser cost due to rise of foreign currency prices and fall of domestic currency prices. What do you do then? You decrease spending, put people back into factories and limit import. And you stop printing. printing, printing.